Hey, it's Kat with you to continue looking at methods. So we're going to look at something called overloading. And we will also just have a look at another example of a slightly more complex method. So basically just something that's got more guts to it than the examples we've currently looked at. So I'm sure I would have said before that you can't have two variables of the same name within the same scope. So you can't have two global variables called int i because that way the computer doesn't know which one you're referring to. So it might say, well, are you referring to the first version of i or the second version of i? And the same is true for methods, except that we can actually have methods, multiple methods of the same name, provided they have different parameters. So let's have a look at a little example that I've come up with. And what we could do is we could have a method that would generate a random number. So let's say public int rand number with no parameters. And what that could do is do something like return int between 1 and 10 by default. And when we ran that we would know uh, that it would return a random number between 1 and 10. But then what if we wanted to be able to set the upper bounds? What we could do is we could write another method almost identical that was called public int rand number and let's say we passed it a variable called int max and that allowed us then to return a number so return an int between 1 and max now the way that the computer would tell the difference is in when you call it so here we've got no parameters and here we've got one parameter so if we made a method call and we said int rand equals rand no 20 because it sees a 20 in the brackets it knows it has to match it up to the second instance of random number and similarly we could do a third method called public int rand number and maybe use a max but also then set a min so maybe we could have it returning a number between for example um, 20 and 30 instead of 1 to 30 which is what our our version with just max would do so let's have a quick look at how that would work on the computer okay so I've just got a really basic program here with uh, with no content and so I said we were going to talk about um, making two methods that um, created a random number so first of all my access modifier is public as I said that's kind of the one that I always use and if we're generating a random number we are generating an integer and we were going to call this one rand no and our first version was not going to take any parameters then what we were going to do is we were going to get it to return a random number um, so the way this works is a uh, math at random will generate a number but it does actually generate decimal values so that is why we then will cast it to an int later so we times it by the number that we want to go up to so that's our maximum and so that we don't count zero we have plus one at the end there okay so that's the math.random so then in my drawstring if I have oh sorry in my paint if I have a drawstring and I'll put in a random number 20, 20. Actually, let's just pop that in a for loop so that we can see that it will actually generate several different numbers. So we'll loop 10 times and when we're looping and printing out multiple things we do actually need to change where they appear on the screen so they don't all end up on top of each other. So we're just going to use a y variable that we're going to increment by 20 every time. So in theory I should be getting random numbers that are 1 as the smallest and 10 as the largest. So we'll run that and we've got 10, 1, 6, 3, 6, 7, 10, 2, 5, 3. 
Okay, and if we repaint the screen, we can see that they are changing, but they don't go below one and they don't go above 10. So let's have a go at our other version. So we'll copy that and we'll paste it. And this time we actually want to give it a max. So we'll call it up just quickly as well. Um, while we're on it, you can see there we've got a an error and it says that we've got a duplicate method. So it's saying that we've got two methods of the same name with the same parameters and that's a no-go zone. So we'll put in a parameter here and our error will disappear. And instead of 10, we'll replace that with max. So let's put another drawstring in and this one we'll put a random, we'll put our maximum number of 20 and we'll just put it next to the other one and let's run it and you can see there that we are getting randoms as well but now we've got a, a minimum of 1 and a maximum of 20 so we'll resize a few times okay so let's now try our third version and now we've got another error and again it's saying you've got two methods of the same name with the same parameters so we'll give it a second parameter oh, and also sorry um, if I change the name of that parameter it makes no difference because the parameter it's looking at the type and how many there are okay so it's not looking at what you've called it it's looking at how many of each type there are um, so int max and int min so the low number so for the min we'll add that to that one and we'll keep our max the same so let's say we'll copy that one again and we'll call it with maybe 40 and we want everything to be between 20 and 40. Uh, oh, sorry, wrong one. So two parameters in the list, 40 and 20. And I'm going to place that at, I'm just going to spread these out a little bit better. Okay, so I'm passing it in the number 40. So that's the maximum number I should get. And uh, the lowest number I should get is 20. Okay, what have we got? Anyway, what have we got? Let's think about that a bit better. We've got uh, a highest number of 40, but then we add 20 to it. So we should be going from twenty to sixty, I think. Does that make more sense? I think yeah, so we're going from twenty to sixty, basically. Um so that one works just a slightly different way. Um but the fact is that our program will know which of these methods to call, even though they look almost the same, uh, it knows which one to call based on the parameters that you give the method. Okay, and that's how you can use the same name multiple times. So we're going to go back to our drawing board and now we've talked about method overloading, we're just going to look at another method that is slightly more complex than some of the ones we've already looked at.